This empty building in Geneva could soon be the birthplace of the next global currency. It's the office of the Facebook-led digital currency initiative called Libra, and now the team that will run it has been selected. Uber, Spotify, Vodafone and 18 other members say cryptocurrency will improve access to finance and help people earn more and spend better. Together we can achieve Libra's mission to create a simple global currency and financial infrastructure that will empower billions of people. But some of the project's biggest and earliest backers have dropped out. They include payment services providers PayPal, Mastercard and Visa, as well as eBay and travel market giant Booking Holdings. And some of Facebook's earliest backers are concerned Libra may cause more harm than good. Overnight, the financial markets would swing to a currency like Libra because it would be a way to avoid taxes, currency controls and any ability of the government to maintain orderly financial markets. The social media giant has 2.7 billion users and owns WhatsApp, Instagram and Messenger. It earns hundreds of billions of dollars by selling ads to companies who want to target these consumers. But having its own currency would let Facebook earn even more by cutting out companies and even banks. The Financial Stability Board, which represents regulators from some of the world's largest economies, has warned that digital currencies like Libra present a host of challenges. And EU regulators are calling for more oversight. Considering the large companies behind this project, it could have a systematic effect on financial stability, monetary stability, data protection and anti-money laundering and other aspects. We will need to regulate Libra on an EU level, both from the point of financial stability and the protection of investors. Libra representatives say they're making progress with regulators. We, we are... Uh providing answers and, and, and showing uh, what we think is good. The main questions uh, and concerns are uh, anti-money laundering, uh, counter-financing of terrorism, so, and obviously there are serious uh, concerns and we need to provide proper uh, solutions and uh, make uh, those regulators comfortable that, that we are uh, handling those issues in a serious manner. But with big names bailing out, the potential market for the new currency is shrinking. It leaves Facebook to deal with regulators and also raises the risk of competition. Earlier this year, Facebook was fined $5 billion by the US Trade Commission for failing to protect users' data and privacy. It's facing similar inquiries in other countries and launching Libra could be even more costly. Mubin Nasir, TRT World. For more, we're joined by Santosh Rao, Head of Research at Manhattan Venture Partners. Santosh, thank you for your time. With so many big name companies pulling out, does this spell the end of Libra or the end of its success? Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, it does not. It's definitely a big pause. Uh, there's, it's, it has to go through a number of hoops. It has to jump through a number of hoops before it comes to fruition. A lot of benefits of digital currency, you know, cryptocurrencies are still a long way from being accepted in the mainstream. Uh, the number of issues that need to be addressed, uh, including the money laundering and uh, all the, uh, the threat to the uh, sovereign currencies. Uh, so all those issues need to be resolved. But over and above that, I think the fact that Facebook is driving this whole thing is a concern in and of itself, uh, because they've had issues with privacy and protecting privacy and a whole range of of other things. So those issues are kind of flowing into this uh, cryptocurrency uh, issues. So it's a mixed, mixed bag. The co companies don't want to get involved. There'll be very high scrutiny of them. So they don't want to be involved at that phase. They might come back later on, but at this point, they don't want to be involved in just answering to regulators and the governments and all the other place people at this point. Do you think Facebook really vastly underestimated the amount of regulation and scrutiny they would be under? Yeah, uh, I think so, because uh, this was, uh, on the face of it, it looks like a very obvious reaction. Uh, we know cryptocurrencies have been abused in the past uh, uh, by the you know, money launderers and all that. So the, the natural, the knee-jerk reaction, the first reaction would have been this. No, absolutely no, you cannot go ahead. And then the fact that Facebook is doing this, there are a lot of benefits. I mean, for, a global, for the developing world, the, the underdeveloped world, the underbank and the unbanked people, 
This is a great asset. So down the road, I'm sure we will have some versions of this, but it has still has to go through a lot of vetting, a lot of uh, iterations, a lot of convincing needs to do across the world to all the reserve banks and the central banks around there to say that, you know, it's not a threat to the global financial system. Uh, but that's taking, that's going to take a lot of convincing. So Facebook did underestimate and they have a lot of work to do. You said that cryptocurrencies have a long way to go before they're accepted as mainstream. Is this, though, just a sign that the banking sector is failing to keep up with the times? Yeah, a big part of that. I mean, the mainstream banks don't want that at this point. Uh, I mean, they're using the blockchain, the underlying operating system that drives all the cryptos. Uh, I think that has a lot of usefulness. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it really helps in the back office, in the clearing and all that stuff. But to be used as a transactional currency, that's going to take a long time. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, convincing people, uh, the the pure pure the 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 purists in the cryptocurrency know that this can be protected, the privacy can be protected, but that message has not been conveyed very well. People need to understand what it is, and uh, so we still uh, that's what I meant. It, it's going to take a while, a long time, before it becomes mainstream and gets accepted. And uh, just quickly before we finish up, Facebook has been at the centre of a lot of privacy scandals. Have they done enough to rebuild trust? Uh, well, it's still work in progress. I mean, they still need to prove. Uh, he's going to come in front of the Congress uh, this week or I think early next week uh, to again talk about that. And those issues are going to come up. So they still have to go and the elections are coming up. So people are still wary. And they've said that they have the systems in place. But I think uh, it'll be a show me story at this point. And there is no margin of error for Facebook to cause any privacy mm. issues. No, there certainly is not. Zantosh Rao, thank you so much for your time.